Hello YouTubers, this is a quick session where I get to talk to you a little bit about a an amazing native simple capability that can actually supercharge your uh, C Sharp .NET Core application like no other. Uh, this capability is something that you know you'd expect to have in any system that stores data in general. So if you're storing data, you need to kind of offer capability to query that data and find that data. And querying the data, you know, just in the traditional way when you're basically looking for a specific name or a specific ID, that's easy. Anybody could do that. But you know if you're you know just looking at how you look up things every day you know uh, normally on the internet you're basically you go in a, into a search engine like google and you will type something and even if you mistype it even if you type it in a different language for god's sake but you're clicking the the clicking the right keys that matches the order of another language you know google search kind of helps you kind of find that i'll let me just show you like a quick example here just so you understand the kind of capability i'm gonna I'm going to show you today. So here's a, here's a little search engine in here. And I'm just going to go to Google like this. And I'm just going to type something that is intentionally wrong, right? So I'm just going to say, instead of Melissa, I'm going to type Melissa with three S's. And it's going to go and say, hey, did you actually mean Melissa with two S's, right? So you can see here that there is some sort of a fuzzy search that's going on, right? We call it fuzzy search, and we'll talk about that in a second. And the fuzzy search basically goes and says, okay, you know, the, the human have made a mistake. What's the closest thing that matches this search term, you know, that this person is looking for? And let me suggest it as a capability. Let me find results for it as a capability. Unless you force, force the engine, you know, to kind of really look for that particular term, you know, it will, you know, try to kind of guess and do a little bit of fuzzy search and find that for you. Okay. So you have data, you want to allow your customers to search through that data. It's a non-conventional way, especially if you have a lot of names in the system. And, you know, sometimes people don't really remember whether Ibrahim is with an E or with an I, you know, how do you spell, you know, Jacqueline, you know, or Caitlin, you know, all these kind of different uh, kind of variations of names. Let's first go to SQL Server, you know, and let me show you how SQL Server natively offers a capability that can do that for you outside of the box. I I created a, a solution for you in here, just a basic thing, you know, you have a bunch of students, you know, you're migrating the data using the entity framework and then empty uh, main method. But, you know, at the SQL Server side, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a query. So let me just show you first what we have. Stick that back in there. There you go. So if I do select all from students like this, and then I run the system like this, you're going to get this nice result in here that basically says, here's a bunch of names that you have available on the system, right? Now, let's try to make a mistake intentionally. So this Ibrahim with the I, I'm going to try to go and say where name equals, right, Ibrahim like this. And I'm going to search this it's going to find one result but if i make one tiny mistake like this it's not going to be able to find it because it's an exact search now watch what sql server can do for you there's something natively that you can have in sql server called soundix right the dude that invented this he was a librarian and you know he wanted to find a way to easily find things and you know he's basically a genius right he was doing it just for his job to kind of simplify for himself there was no computers no computers nothing he just wanted to find a way to kind of simplify finding things based on the way they sound and he came up with soundix and today i get to show it to you you know in 2022 you know in this particular way anyway long story short you put soundix in here and here and now when i'm searching for this look what happens it can't find ibrahim even though i misspelled the word it says it seems like the it sounds like Ibrahim with the I. That's what you're really looking for. The same thing happens with something else. Like if I say Melissa like that. I don't know if I added a Melissa <coughs> in the search. Let me execute just this one. Do I have Melissa in here? I don't have Melissa in here. Uh, you know, well, you know, there's so many different names in here. Uh, you know, I, I have someone that used to call me Hushan instead of Hassan because it's just too hard as you can tell if you look for it as as Hoshan it'll find Hassan for you it's really strong and really amazing capability okay this exists in SQL server outside of the box 
how do I bring that through the entity framework onto my system, right? So I have a native function that lives in a SQL server. I want to bring this capability into my code. How do we go about doing that? Watch this. So this is your storage broker, which is, you know, talking to your entity framework, the DB context. I'm going to go up in here and say public static, right? Void as, sorry, string. And then I'm going to call it whatever I want. I'm going to call it sounds like. And this guy is going to take a string and here's your, you know, I don't know, argument that you're searching for. Let's call it query. Okay. <clears throat> this function is not going to implement anything. Why is that? Because it's not actually a, a, obtaining its implementation from C sharp code. It's going and talking to SQL Server to pull that code in. Okay. However, I'm going to add something on top of it that says DB function like this. And then I'm going to go and say my function name is soundix. That's the exact same one that we just used in the query. And I'm going to go and say built in, <laughs> built in equal true. So I'm basically saying this is not a user made custom function. You can connect your own custom functions, you know, uh, pr stored procedures and all that the exact same way. But I'm basically in here saying, no, no, this is, this is an actual native function in the system that I'm running with. Okay. Now let's do our query in here. So I'm going to go here and say I queryable of students <clears> to <throat> students like this. And then I'm going to go and say, well, let's, let's initialize our brokers so is our storage broker like this. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go here and say broker dot students where, okay. And then I'm going to go and say student and then uh, 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 storage broker dot sounds like student dot name. So just like I'm doing soundix exactly the exact same way equals equals storage broker dot sounds like again, which is the query that I'm sending in. And in this case, let's do a query that we just did. Let's do the uh, uh, which one Ibrahim Ibrahim with the with the E Ibrahim like this. Okay, so that's my query. And then I'm just going to print it out. So I'm just going to go and say console right line. And here's your students dot count or something. This is supposed to spit, you know, a value of one count, right? But we will find in a second uh, what that looks like. So let's clear this dot net project. I think I renamed my project. Let's see what I have here. Yeah, cons. Okay, so dot net run project, and here is your console app, and here is your uh, fuzzy fuzz demo. So this is supposed to kind of print one record, as you can see. Here's one record, right? And we're gonna play with it a little bit, right? So I'm, so you can see here if I run this application like this that the result that's going to come back is actually Ibrahim with the I, not Ibrahim with the E, right? So it's basically, this is how you can very easily connect. Like, so here it is. If you look at the results, here it is. It says Ibrahim right here, right? That's it. That's, that's the whole trick, right? The trick here is to allow you or, or just show you kind of the capability of fuzzy search, allow people to search and make mistakes and have technology work around the imperfections you know, of, of, of the users to provide the best possible experience. Now I have to say something, this exists in a SQL. It may or may not exist in, you know, a different technology or a different framework or a different platform. So just make sure that you're aware that SQL server has, you know, literally years and years and years, you know, of amazing hidden capabilities you know, that it can do. I can't wait to show you some of the crazy stuff that SQL Server can do. But, you know, that means that your abstraction layer is not really abstract because if you switch it with MariaDB or, you know, some Postgres or something like that, you may or may not find this functionality in there. I hope you found this a little bit useful, insightful. I hope it kind of supercharges your application, allows you to kind of take it and work with it and implement something useful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care. I'll see you in another video.